Hey everybody, Falcon Ash K here. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to have a video about what games you should have in your collection when you start your collection and uh, what replayability they have. Um, first off, there's going to be a tile laying game where you're placing a tile, putting out workers, that is Carcassonne. Carcassonne plays up to uh, four players. Uh, five players, two to five. And, um, yeah, you're placing out tiles, uh, taking over er areas. Uh, once you place that meeple on the tile, if you complete a road or whatever structure that you're, you're completing with that builder, you get that meeple back, and then you can place it somewhere else. A lot of replayability on that one, too. Uh, base box comes with Rivers Expansion, and the uh, Abbey. Details in the box. Another one to start off with, Star Realms. Um, this is not Star Realms, this is a Star Realms Frontier, which is an expansion or standalone game. Star Realms is a deck building game where you have a basic set of 10 cards to play. You have a, a area or a, a trade row where you're purchasing cards to add to your deck, deck building. And um, you're attacking your friend against their authority, which I think is something to do with something. Um, it says in detail in the book, but I don't know. Uh, so you're attacking their authority. First person to lose all their authority uh, loses. Another good one I like to play is Smash Up. <clears throat> Smash Up is a faction building game where you're uh, deploying your minions on bases. Once those bases are destroyed, uh, the ranking on the base tells you how many points you're going to get. Um, this is an uh, expansion, but you can also play expansions by themselves. So if you get this, you're going to get uh, um, ghosts, uh, carnivorous plants, um, bear rider, uh, guys and uh, futuristic gear people oh, I forgot what they're called um, so you can mix and match this two players right here the base set has dinosaurs ninjas um, uh, pirates uh, robots zombies aliens so combining two factions you'll have uh, robot zombies or, or uh, dinosaur pirates or something of that nature and uh, um, battle for the bases. First person to 21 points wins. Another one I have on the list is Dixit. Um, Dixit is a game where you can play with your family. You have cards um, and you look at your cards, look at the abstract picture on them and say um, a lonely candle in the wind or something like that or sing a song or say a poem a short poem not to give that much detail about your your card and everybody else is gonna look at their cards and put their cards in that similar description of what you just gave shuffle them up and then place them out on a board um, people are voting on whose card is whose or taking guesses um, you want people to vote for your card, but you don't want everybody to vote for your card because then you're going to lose points. Not lose points, just not get any points, but then other people are going to get points based on their votes. So that's a good one. Buying expansions also increases the replayability on it. If you're a Yahtzee fan, like to roll dice, you'd like to get numbers or things that are similar on the dice, getting Yahtzees. Um, I have two that I really like. Um... King of Tokyo, <clears throat> you're playing as giant creatures. This is the first edition box. Uh, playing as giant kaiju, uh, battling for Tokyo. If you're in Tokyo, uh, anybody that's outside of Tokyo is going to do damage to you. If you're in Tokyo, you're doing damage to them. You're rolling claws, energy, uh, and numbers, and hearts based on if you're in or outside of Tokyo. If you're in Tokyo, Hearts don't do you any good, but if you're outside Tokyo, you'll heal that many points that you've rolled on your dice. 
the numbers will give you more victory points. First one to 20 victory points wins. Uh, claws do damage opposing or deposing, depending on if you're in or out of Tokyo. Um, you can use energy to buy power-up cards, which allow you to have flaming breath, uh, collapsing buildings that you can gain points immediately towards your 20-point victory goal. Really cool Yahtzee-style battling monsters. Quick and easy. The other one is an uh, old uh, favorite of mine as well. I just got two more expansions, so I have four expansions all together. Elder Sign. You see some creatures, creatures in the background. That's just a gargoyle. But uh, HP Lovecraft back in the um, way back whens uh, created a, a mythos about uh, Cthulhu, which is an elder god who crash landed on our planet and is in the bottom of our oceans. And he is sending out minions and creatures to gain worshippers. The more worshippers he has, the more he can open up these uh, portals to allow him to come into our world. Um, and then once he comes into our world, or any of the other elder gods come into our world, we're done for. It takes place in the 30s, so that's why they have like Tommy guns and some other things like that. Um, you're rolling dice to uh, explore locations of the um, Mesopotamian. Nope, that's not it. Um, Mesopotamian. Uh, um, what do they call that? It's it's a place where you go and they have a lot of relics. Yeah, they call it a museum. There you go. So, heading out around the museum, finding out uh, items, uh, gaining um, allies to help you out, fight the elder gods. You're finding elder signs. Elder signs to block these portals from stopping them from entering the realm. Um, and uh, you have a uh, time system where there's a clock. Every time somebody takes a turn, the clock will keep advancing. Every time it hits midnight, certain card effects will take place. And um, that will awaken the Elder God or have uh, creatures come onto the board or something bad, depending on what, what you're playing at, at the time. So much replayability. There's so much cards in the in the, the box. Uh, it plays... Uh, I need glasses. One to eight players. So you can play this solo as well. I fantastically recommend it. And last but not least, favorites of favorites you must have in your collection. Uh, if you like puzzly um, aspects of trying to solve something, um, word searches, I don't know if that actually takes place, but um, Pandemic. If you know me in my real life, if I was stuck on a deserted island, Pandemic would be my, of course, with someone else. I'd have to have Pandemic with me. Uh, it's very puzzly. You can you can uh, variate the um, range of difficulty, throwing in um, cards into a deck of uh, locations or data cards, and you're trading those data cards to stop viruses from outbreaking around the world. Um, you're going to have uh, another deck of cards that represents the outbreaks and uh, things that happen around uh, in the player deck there's also going to be epidemic cards when the epidemic cards come up the, the previous cards that you had for the other diseases get shuffled back into the deck so they can actually have outbreaks in the, lo the locations that you've already had placed out previously your goal as a CDC player is to find at least five or four, if you're playing as uh, the scientist, data cards. Go back to a CDC or build another location where you can have the, uh, the cure found. And you have four viruses, red, yellow, black, and blue, that you are trying to find the cure for. Once that's done, you win the game. Ways of losing is if you uh, run out of uh, cubes of that virus color, if you have eight outbreaks, if you run out of player cards, and uh, there's another way. But yeah, there's so many ways to lose, but so many ways to win. One way to win. Um, a bonus to this is um, the number of roll cards that you get in the base set. I think it's seven now, based on second edition. And 
either select the one that you want or randomly uh, uh, throw out cards. Um, it's one to four players. Uh, one to four, one, actually it's two to four players. Uh, with expansions, you can play one player or up to five players with a bioterrorist. Um, so that's my story. Now to you guys, I'm putting out a poll of ways to increase the value of these games uh, through expansions or um, play mats, uh, component pieces, that kind of thing. I can do a video separate for that. Or the other video is doing a run through of Transformer cards I do, or I have, with the character voices that I will be doing. So uh, I'm going to put a, a poll in and you guys can select which of those videos you want me to do next. If you select one, I'll do the second one next, alternating, you know, that kind of thing. I'm also going to try to go through a, a list of my collection. Um, not so much a list, but I have a board game, uh, <laughs> a single uh, shelf that I can go through with some of my board games. And uh, hope to see you next time. Uh, see you real soon. Bye.